Hi, this is Beverly Cole, and this is part two of our Easter egg card kit. Be sure to watch part one before this. I didn't show you how to do this in the last video because it's kind of self-explanatory after you have done the more difficult backgrounds, but this is the card base for the card we're going to do next, which has the uh, egg embossed directly into our background. So I put my sandwiched together for this machine. Your machine might uh, be different for impressing a, da, a, a stencil into cardstock. Follow manufacturer's directions. Here I'm using Golden Meadow Versifying Claire to do our background. Now notice that I slide my sponge dauber from the glass onto the card. This gives you a nice even edge and no bulky dark lines around the edge. I start on the glass and then I go onto the card. I've done all the edges with the golden metal and now the middle. Now I would replace the stencil and go over the stencil edges. Of course, you could have put the stencil on before you did the, the corners, but you really don't need it there when you're doing the outside edge. Going in a circular motion, want to get the edges so that it really stands out when we remove our stencil. These are very juicy ink pads and really fun to work with. Colors are vivid. Now I'm making A deep orange background using the red tulip over the golden meadow. This way you get three colors out of two ink pads. We all know the basics of art when we were in elementary school. What the primary colors are, blue, red, and yellow, and then you can make other colors with those three colors. So here we're making the simple orange by mixing red and yellow. Now I'm going around the edges again. I want that to stand out across the middle and then dabbing a bit on the corners as well. I do leave more yellow toward the center of the egg, but I have gone over the whole egg with the red to, uh, to pick up that orange color. It's just darker on the edges. Now we're going to use dimensional glue. to make our flowers more dimensional. Now to do this easily, you're going to squeeze from the big end of the petal towards the center. Just drag it toward the center. Squeeze and pull, squeeze and pull. Squeeze and pull. And then you can fix it if you need to. And it is better to keep your bottle straight up and down. Squeeze and pull, squeeze and pull. You can even stop squeezing after you get a good amount on the bigger end of the petal. You'll get the hang of it after you do it a few times. It's very effective for flowers or raindrops. Squeeze and pull. And now we're going to add some silver pearl embossing powder, which is a cosmic, semi-transparent embossing powder. Sparkle and Sprinkle creates their own this is one of our cosmic and it is beautiful it's going to give this very silvery pearlescent finish to the background and to the egg now i was very purposefully not coating the entire background of this card i just want it to be kind of uh, a random almost random covering and i heat set it and it's got this frosty look to it, but it's cosmic. So it's got kind of like a pearlescent rainbow effect. And now we're going to stamp our sentiment, which I used sentiments from the Easter Parade set. This is not included in the kit. And you can use any sentiments that you prefer. Of course, I'm kind of partial to these since I wrote them myself. <laughs> And this one says, don't put all your eggs in one basket, share them with me. So it's kind of a fun sentiment for a card. 
for a granddaughter, a daughter, a friend, a mom, a boyfriend, whatever. Now using those same two inks, I'm not re-inking. I did open the ink pad, but I'm not re-inking. I'm just using what I had left on the, the uh, sponge dauber with the golden meadow and then now the No, I just used the Golden Meadow on this one. I got confused with the other card. And I just gave it a little bit of a frame with black card. And now I'm making a tiny bow with some black and white butcher's twine. And I am an expert at little bows. When uh, my Barbie's bows would come undone, I got used to tying those little bows over and over in her hair, on her ponytail. And I would do it for all my friends. So making little bows is one of my little talents, I guess you could say. Tying bows and untying knots. I love doing both of those things. I attach the bow with a little bit of permanent adhesive. This could also be done with a glue dot. And once again, using some terrific tape, I attach our image to a black cardstock frame, which measures a half an inch bigger in each direction, giving it a quarter inch frame. And it picks up the black from the uh, sentiments frame and from the baker's twine. And here are our two cards we've made so far. And we have one more to go. Now again, this background was done as it was, the purple one was in the first video. So if you wanna see how I did it, watch the first video. Now what I'm showing you here is that sometimes when you do this technique, you might get a line uh, from the edge of the um, stencil. But I used my jewel picker and I just press on those lines and the jewel picker gives enough pressure that it presses that line away nearly invisible to the eye and once you get rid of that you're able to make your card look very smooth with the next technique. Now I covered my card with Versamark ink all over. Some areas I hit a little with a little more ink than others and that's not a problem. The important thing here is that you cover your entire background piece with Versamark ink. And then we're going to coat it with silver pearl embossing powder again, only this time we want to make sure we cover the entire background. Dump it on, tap it off. I do one side at a time because it's easier. I am trying to stay in control of the embossing powder instead of the embossing powder taking control of me, which happens sometimes. Tap, 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 and then heat emboss. Holding it down with my tweezers. So pretty, so, so shimmery. And now for our focal point. We put the stencil over our piece that we put through the die cut machine. So it's nicely embossed using the yellow again giving it a really good coat of yellow. Notice that I'm really inking this up completely, the entire thing, and right off the edges so we get that beautiful edge. We will be fussy cutting this one again, although it's really not that fussy. It's just an egg shape. That's not hard to do. But I hope you'll still give that technique a try where I said I look at the scrap area when I cut. Now I'm using 
tulip red, creating that orange again. Notice I'm going around like a halo, making it nice and orange and leaving the middle yellow. And now, more fun. We're going to use the Buttercup Petal Embossing Powder. And that's another cosmic, just like the Silver Pearl. And I put it only over the yellow. I try very hard to keep it just in the middle. It's no big deal if it's a little bit off. And then we're going to use Clementine, which is an opaque embossing powder. Very sparkly and pretty. And we'll heat emboss this after we add the embossing powders. First the yellow is in the center, and now the clementine around the edges. And now we'll heat set this. And we want all those edges to be heat embossed as well. You want to heat emboss the entire thing because you're not going to waste those edges. After you fussy cut this, and remember to keep your eye on the orange area as you cut, to give yourself a really perfect little tiny orange edge around this egg. And that will set it off from the background. You don't want to cut it completely off, so keep your eye as you cut on the orange background. Now you have the edge. You could use all kinds of punches to make fall leaves if you have a leaf or hearts, or stars, or flowers. I just grabbed my tiny hole punch because I thought, well, yeah, I really should save these. They're so pretty. I could put them in a shaker card. Of course, I forgot. I have a lot of them in my, in my punch. Now using quarter inch terrific tape, we make a border on our background and I burnished in the campfire glitter that comes in the kit and then I attach my egg background using of course terrific tape to attach the egg I'm using some of our foam squares by craft perfect and these are great, these are big, so you only need three. And then I'll attach that to the background. I put it up in the left-hand corner on an angle so that I have room for my sentiment at the bottom. And here I'm stamping the sentiment twice. If I have a piece of paper out, I stamp twice, just in case one gets messed up. And then I'm going to use the embossing powders from the kit, both the buttercup petal and the clementine. Keeping the buttercup kind of near the bottom. And the clementine kind of near the top. So they overlap. I'm not really too fussy about it. Just kind of dump them on there. And heat set that. Now here I'm showing that I'm going to cut a frame to go behind this sentiment. And it's really a small job. So I'm using my large shears by Tim Holtz. The blades on this are so long, they're perfect for cutting a straight piece, even for shaving off a tiny bit. These are my favorite, favorite shears for jobs like this. And they are ultra sharp and they stay that way. Sometimes it's hard to put tiny pieces through a paper trimmer. So I sometimes just do this instead. Now it looks like I'm gonna make a white frame for a white piece, but that's not the case. Just like we did with the purple, Band, belly band on the other card, 
we're going to color this background with our inks, but I'm not going to rub the ink pad on like I did with that one. I'm going to use these sponge daubers and just tap the color and then rub it on. It's much easier for a tiny piece this way. If you try to rub your little piece on the ink pad, you might just get a lot of ink saturated on your fingers. You'll get ink on your fingers this way too, but easily washed off. So this gives us that lovely orange color once again, without having to have a piece of orange cardstock. We know this will match because we're creating it ourselves. Then the sentiment easily goes right there. Just use a little tape. Little terrific tape. Just right. Happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter. And here's our third card. One, two, three. Happy Easter, my friends. Be sure to order your kit and you can make more than these three cards by ordering other colors of embossing powder and glitter from Sparkle and Sprinkle. Be sure to hit the bell so you don't miss a video. Have fun and happy Easter.